Habaragani. Welcome back to night two of the International Civil Rights Center and Museum's 2022 Kwanzaa Lecture Series. Tonight, we have two founding members of the Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective speaking on the principle of Kujijakalia. The Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective is a group of families and community members who came together to create their first seven-day Kwanzaa celebration in 2010. Every year since then, the Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective has brought the city of Greensboro this annual celebration and has added events such as the Kwanzaa Family Fest and their first Friday Ujama Marketplace to usher in the season. The Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective members are Nia Hendricks Wilson, Dr. Don Tafari, Jamila Niera Nasir, Dandara Boyd, and Tanya Poole. A celebration of life ceremony as part of this year's event in honor of Mama Nia, who transitioned earlier this year. The Kwanzaa Collective's determination and commitment to cultural awareness in the Greensboro community is unparalleled. The International Civil Rights Center and Museum is proud to present on the second night of Kwanzaa, two of the Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective's founding members, Dr. Don Tafari and Tanya Poole, speaking on the principle of Kujijakalia, self-determination. It's Kwanzaa time. 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 Greetings, family. Jumbo and Habarigani. Habarigani. When we say Habarigani, Habarigani means what's the news? And your response is whatever that day of Kwanzaa is. So today, we are celebrating the second day of Kwanzaa. So I'm going to say Habarigani. Habarigani, Mama Tanya. Habarigani, and the word is Kuji Chagulia. <laughs> yes, all right. So my name is Dawn Hicks Tafari, also known as Dr. Dawn or Mama Dawn, and I am one of the co-founders of the Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective. Standing with me so elegantly and gorgeously today <laughs> is Mama Tanya Poole. Yes, yes, yes. Greetings, I'm Mama Tanya Poole. Most of you know me by that name, also known as Anki Ma'at, which is a new name, which kind of ties into Kuji Chagulia self-determination, but we'll get into that in a second. Right, <laughs> not with us today is our, another one of our co-founders and our dear, uh, recently uh, departed sister, uh, Lee Esther Niangela Hendricks Wilson, also known as Oset Siat Egun, also known as Ia Omi Ire. And so we stand here today in her honor as a new ancestor blessing us and watching us and standing with us. She's with us here today. Okay. Also, another co-founder is Mama J, also known as, Jim well, her name is uh, Jamila Niera Nasir and Mama Dundara Boyd. So we are the Kwanzaa Collective, the Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective, and we're so happy to talk with you today about Kuti Jagulia. And Kuti Jagulia is really, really, really a principle that has always been near and dear to us for so many reasons. It's really a foundational piece as to what the Kwanzaa Collective is all about. Kuti Jagulia. That is the principle that I first fell in love with when I first learned about Kwanzaa when I was in college. Mostly, and I'm going to be honest, because it had such the most interesting name, right? Just yeah. practicing the name, Kuji Chagulia. And I felt strong and I felt empowered when I got the name right. But what it means is to define ourselves, name ourselves, create for ourselves, and speak for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And whenever I think of Kuji Chakulia, I think about owning and loving everything about me. My hair, my skin color, my big full lips, yes. right? <laughs> Changing my name. You ever know somebody who changed their name, who took on an African name? 
right? My, I, had a, I have a different last name than I used to have, right? And that's all Kooji Chagalia because it's about representing. The commitment and practice to Kooji Chagalia, this second principle of the Nguzo Saba. The Nguzo Saba are the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa was started right in the, heart, the height of the civil rights era by Dr. Maulana Karanga. Okay, and it has spread across the country as a way for black people, people of African descent, people who honor people of African descent all around the world to reconnect with Africa, to reconnect with African principles, right? To reconnect and have a new foundation in love for who we are and how we navigate and exist in the world. Commitment and practice, it expresses itself and in not just saying it, but doing it, right? Kuji Chakalia is action. It demands that we really be honest about who we are. We defend and develop ourselves instead of allowing others to name us, to call us, to determine who we are and how we navigate the world. And it requires that we reach back to move forward that principle of Sankofa, right? That we require, that we, we recover our lost selves and that we're able to stand in the power of those ancestors who have come before us. Now Kwanzaa, on a general scale, again, has is celebrated all over the world, but we wanna talk to you a little bit about Kwanzaa right here in Greensboro. Yes, 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 so Greensboro has a huge Kwanzaa history. As a native of Greensboro, and I believe I'm the, I not believe, I know, I'm the only uh, member of the Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective who is native to Greensboro, born and raised here. And as someone who was born and raised here, I have seen this amazing celebration take on so many different forms in the city. And while we're talking about the history of Kwanzaa, my first, um, memory of Kwanzaa, my own history with Kwanzaa. I was probably in middle school and I remember going to an event at Call Clue Center and it was so beautiful. To this day, I honestly don't know who put it on. It may have been um, some of the other forerunners here in the city, but I remember going to this event in, at Call Clue uh, Community Center and it was so colorful, so bright, so lively. And those of you who know, who are from Greensboro, you know that there are times when we go through these uh, very cultural moments and then there's times where it kind of seems subdued. So for me, coming into Kwanzaa and seeing like, wow, my city really does uh, or can represent this beautiful celebration in such an amazing way, like I never felt so black. <laughs> Oh, that's right. And then in that moment, it really awakened that within me. It was so beautiful, the drumming, the colors, and I fell in love with the celebration at that time. Before my introduction into Kwanzaa, coming on the heels of the civil rights era um, in Greensboro in the late 70s, we have uh, the Kamaras, the Kamara family here in Greensboro, working with some of the names that you know, such as Reverend uh, Nelson Johnson and uh, Joyce Johnson, his wife, um, and uh, Diane Bellamy Small and Brenda Dalton James. These are some forerunners in the city of Greensboro and Bernice Ion, some, some amazing forerunners in the city of Greensboro in terms of bringing this celebration to the triad. And so in the 70s, we're coming out of the, uh, the civil rights, the height of the civil rights era. Um, we're in the black uh, power movement and the civil rights era are blending together. And we are really coming into an era where we are knowing who we are and we're proclaiming who we are unapologetically, which is all Kuji Chagulia anyway, naming ourselves, defining ourselves, self-determination. And so Kwanzaa in the city of Greensboro, for me, was really rooted in this principle of Kuji Chagulia, of self-determination. We see the counter behind us, no matter how many sit-ins have had to occur, dogs, hoses, you know, uh, all of these things that we know about, we will still stand firm in the knowledge of who we are and name ourselves and, and celebrate ourselves. Kuji Chagulia for me also, um, as Mama Dawn stated, I always knew that Kuji Chagulia was like one of Mama Dawn's favorite principles. We all have a favorite, right? <laughs> if you ask the Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective, like what's, what's our favorite? We all have a favorite. And uh, that was always a principle that was um, near and dear to uh, Mama Dawn's heart. 
And it was always near and dear to mine as well, but I've kind of grown more into it because what I've learned about Kuji Chagulia, looking at our, our predecessors in terms of those who have put on the celebration in the city of Greensboro, but those who are still celebrating as well, um, is that it is action oriented, as Mama Dawn stated. You know, the first principle is, is umoja, it's like a call to, to unity. But when we get to Kuji Chagulia, it's some action, you know? It's like, okay, we're saying we're unified, we're saying we're this, we're saying mm -hmm. we're coming together. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. And Kuji Chagulia is the principle that's like, okay, <laughs> Umoja woke you up. Kuji Chagulia says, let's get to work. Let's get to work, yes. <laughs> for real. And so when we think of Kuji Chagulia, we think of these three questions, part of the Kawaii philosophy. Mm -hmm. Who am I? Am I who I say I am? And am I all I ought to be? Think about that. Who am I? Am I who I say I am? And am I all I ought to be? And when we think about that, a lot of times if I ask you, who are you? You're ready to say, oh, my name is Dawn. My name is this, I'm this. But am I who I say I am? Like, if I say I'm a strong black woman, are you really? Like, what, and what does that mean? How do we define strong? How do we define black? How do we define woman? What are all of those things, right? Am I an educator? Why am I an educator? Why, what, what makes me strong? What makes me good? What makes me powerful? What makes me empowered? So it really is this opportunity to really reflect and introspect and think more deeply, do that work, take this action towards really claiming and uncovering who I am and how I navigate this space and time. And that last question, right, and then I ask you, right, not just who I am, who am I? Am I who I say I am, right? That's that, that's that pushback, that personal internal pushback, because Kucha Chagali is not about me and you going at it. Like, girl, I don't think right. you really, Tanya Poole. <laughs> like, no, it's, it, this is the work in here. Yeah. This is the work in here, because the fingers are strong. The fingers need to each be able to do their job, but they need to come together as a fist. But in order to come together as a fist, they need to still be able to do their job individually so that they can come together as the fist. And so that's what that am I who I say I am. That's that real pushback, that real questioning, that real um, thinking about who that first question, how I answered that first question. And then that last, that last question, Am I all I ought to be? That's the question. Can I do more? <laughs> mm. Can I be better? Can I be stronger? Can I be more steeped into my cultural desires, the cultural affirmations? I say I'm a strong black woman. Can I be better at that, right? Should I be? And how? Right, so that's what all of this is bringing us together in doing that work. Who am I? Am I who I say I am? And that, that second question always really gets me because it's like, you just <laughs> said, hmm, I'm this, but am I, am I who I say I am? Mm -hmm. And then am I all I ought to be? Because it takes us to the next level. It forces us to think back to those people whose shoulders we stand on. Mm -hmm. And it forces us to do better. Because when I think about my grandmamas and my grandmamas and their grandmamas and my grandfathers and all the work that they have done so that I could stand in this place right now as a woman, as a free black woman, right? As an emancipated black woman in this space of all spaces, I need to do better, right? I know I'm, I'm good. But sometimes it's really so important for us to think about what can I be doing better? And Kwanzaa is such an important time of year for us to be doing that. And the principle of Kuji Chagulia is really a great time. This is this concentrated, this intentional moment where we're really thinking about, am I all I ought to be? You know, it's funny when you say that too, am I all I ought to be? And I love when you presented us with, like I was not aware of those questions until you presented us with them like several years ago. And it really, really, every year it makes me think, and I wanna challenge those who are watching, like to get out a piece of paper and a pencil and answer those questions, um, you know, who am I? Am I who I say I am? And am I 
all I ought to be. Ooh, that one, that last one is the one that gets me because I'm like, ooh, it's always a little bit more, you know, that, and, 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 and I think about it too in terms of, because we do live in a society that is very driven. Like, what are you doing today? What did you cross everything off of your to-do list? How productive are you? And we can mistake productivity for actually being all that we ought to be. Kuji Chagolia is not about just being productive. It's about being productive in the right things. It's about being productive in things that move you and your family and your community further, you know? And so for me, as I've grown into loving this principle even more, this Kuji Chagolia, those are the things that I think about when I think about am I all I ought to be, especially this time of, of the year. At the end of the year, this is the time of the year where people are really reflecting on was I really all that I ought to have been this year? You know, how can I improve that in going into the year ahead? And it also then changes your priorities. Right? It changes what's important. It changes what you give energy to, what you choose to be productive to. And so even, I, I'll just say one of mine. Okay, I, since I'm asking y'all to do it, I'll just say one of mine. One of the things that for me I noticed this past year, you know, you, you see family, you be like, hey, grandma, hey, dad, hey, mom, you know, but, you know, do you really spend time with mm. them? This year, I can honestly say I could spend more quality time with my family. Oh, man, if they watching, I know they probably amen it. But, um, but, but that's the thing, because that's something that I value, you know? And self-determination, to me, ties into what you value. Mm. How you determine to, to be yourself should be very much linked to what it is you say you value and what is important Absolutely. to you. You know, and so when we when we think about have we are we all that we ought to be in all of the three questions, we need to look at them through the lens. It's good to look at them through the lens of who we who we really say that we are. Not who we think that we should be because society says we should be this and we should be right. that and should be, you know, who do we really know ourselves to be? Mm -hmm. And if we don't know that. Kuji Chagolia then, see, Kuji Chagolia to me is, is one of those challenging ones, mm -hmm. right? Isn't it a red candle yes. when you light it? Mm -hmm. So when you light it, you know, the, it's the first red candle, that fire, you know, that fire energy, that, that blood. The struggle. It represents the blood mm -hmm. and the, the struggle, blood and the struggle, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes with Kuji Chagolia, you can't run away from that internal struggle right. to define yourself, right. Right. you know, to be clear about who you are. You know, yeah. and then take pride in that and, to, and then to walk fully into that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's an intentionality, yeah. right? That's a lot of what I'm thinking yeah. about and I'm hearing you say is it's about intentionality. Who am I? Mm -hmm. Am I who I say I am? Hmm, how can I be better? Like you said, it's not about just getting busier. Right. Right, it's about getting more thoughtful. Mm -hmm. It's about becoming more, like I used the word before, introspective. Yeah. Right, it's about, it's about becoming more honest and authentic. <laughs> becoming more honest and not so much, now you wanna be honest with other people, but this is about honesty with me. I gotta be honest with myself and that's the work. And if I say I'm about family, am I really? Right. Did I just walk past my, my 73 year old father and just give him a wave or did I stop and give him a hug and, and hear what he had, what was on yeah. his mind today, right? So it is definitely that, that being better, taking those steps every day to be more intentional. Mm -hmm. And none of us are perfect because, and that's why we revisit this every year. That's right. Right? Kwanzaa time is about coming back to revisit and to sit and mm -hmm. thought and introspection and reflection about how we have lived these principles throughout the year. It's not about, okay, I'm going to be, we're going to be unified and then we're going to name ourselves. Then we're going to self and then we're going to self-determine. Right, and then we're going to do some work together and then we're going to go buy shop back black businesses from December 26th to January 1st. No, it's, this is the time to sit and reflect on how we have lived these principles all year long. And to project and say, and, and make new promises to ourselves, to, to have new thoughts about, set new intentions mm. for the next year. Like, mm, I did okay with this. I was, I was, I was a rock star with Ujima. I, I mean, all, every, almost everything I bought this year was, was from a black owned business, right? But you know what? I really wasn't 
that I really didn't pay enough time to my elders. I really didn't um, work on practicing my own needs and meeting my goals. Mm -hmm. I, my goals went unmet this year. How can I do that better next year, right? So that's what Kulji Chakalia is about. And that's what Kwanzaa is about. It's about setting those goals. So that's what I want us to think about when we think about how do we live Kulji Chakalia. That it, whether, whether it's changing your name, right? And that's not something you have to do, but when you see people who change their names, that's typically what it's rooted in because they want a name that represents who they are on the inside. It's typically about this outward manifestation of this inward work. That's oftentimes when you see people changing their names or wearing the clothes or wearing their hair in a way that's culturally, um, aesthetically beautifully, right? It's all about all of those things, about bringing them together and walking in that Kuchi Chagalia is really, like I said, being honest and authentic in your walk and intentional. It's an important part of Kuchi Chakulia. And you know what? If I could give another assignment, <laughs> you got me thinking of assignments. Assignment. She's the educator, but <laughs> she makes me think of <laughs> assignments. But I think it would be great too if you could, if we could all um, write down our names mm -mm. and research the meaning of our names. Not asking anybody to change their name. Not asking anybody to go and you know, you know, get adopted whole another name but know the name that you have. Because a lot of times we are given names and we don't understand you know, what that means for us or how it actually plays out into our lives. When I look at my, my own birth name, it's beautiful. You know, the name that my parents gave me is beautiful and how I have lived out that, you know, that name, that ta Tanya Poole, I was gonna say my whole name, Tanya Renee Poole, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, and I recently I was thinking about my, my birth middle name being Renee and representing, you know, a rebirth. And so it's like, mm -hmm. how, how has rebirth and renaissance always shown up in my own life? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we're living these things out and we don't, it's unintentional, you know? And so how, how, can, how then can I, you know, expand that and, and be more of all that I ought to be just using that one name, just my middle name, right? And so, and as I mentioned, uh, or Mama Dawn mentioned in the opening, our dear sis who recently transitioned, Mama Nia, founding member of the Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective, gave me a new name, Anki Ma'at. And so the meaning of that name, how does that show up for me? And so at this, stage, at in this stage in my life, you mm -hmm. know, and how the two names together are blending together, mm -hmm. <laughs> depending on the day, right? And so I challenge us all, you know, because Kuji Chagulia for me is, is a challenging principle, meaning it challenges, it's confronting. Mm. It, it's, it's confronting. Mm. It's like when you hold a mirror up to your face and it's like, ooh, that's what I look like, you know? <laughs> Kuji Chagali is not one of those, you know, shy away from kind of principles. It's a, it's a in your face principle. And so I challenge us all to write down our names, do research, what does your first name mean? How does that show up in your life? Mm -hmm. If you have a middle name, what does that mean? How have you lived that out, even subconsciously, without even realizing that that is what you were doing? And then how can you expand it into be all that you ought to be? Right, <laughs> Use, right. just using your name. See, we don't have to be complicated in these challenges. Use what you already have to live Kuji Chagulia. Mm -hmm. And that, when we think about Kwanzaa, all the principles coming together, it makes me think about Imani. Because mm -hmm. Kuji Chagulia, this work on looking at who you are and the name you have, it jumps me, it made me think about Imani, right? Because mm -hmm. Imani is about faith in our ancestors, faith in our parents, our teachers. You have to believe that the name that your people gave to you at, upon your entry into this earth mm -hmm. is meaningful. So throw, when I talk about taking on a new name, that's not something that I, people I know do willy nilly. Mm -hmm. Because you need to really think about the name that you have. And like you said, why was that name given to you? Why did your, par why did your parents choose that name for you? What does it mean to them? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's really important. Sometimes you need to talk to your elders that's right. and say, why did you give this name to me? Right, mm -hmm. as you're doing that work, as you're doing that work. And if, and again, that name could serve you well, serve their legacy, it mm -hmm. serves you for a certain amount of time. And if 
you decide, you know what, I feel like I'm doing, my, my, my work is different right now in this next phase of my life and I need a name to take me in this place, then that's something that you do. But I want you to always be really careful when we look at our names and like I said, if you're thinking about taking on a new name, because I don't want you to go and say, well, the Kwanzaa Collective told me I need a new name. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're saying if the work happens and it's cyclical work, it's constant work, and it really is work that involves your community. And that's something else, thinking about looking at, Tanya talked about this work around looking at your, the names that you have and how do you show up as those names and what those names meant. It's doing that, looking at seeing who your genealogy yes. is, to building a family tree. One of the most important things, yes. talk about an assignment. Yeah. <laughs> this is y'all's third assignment. This is y'all's third assignment, <laughs> right? Is build your family tree. You know, be able to sit down and name, if not by memory, at least on paper, your, your parents, their parents, their parents, their parents, and their parents. Go back as far as you can. For African descendant people in this country, that's not always easy, right? Because it typically stops somewhere in the 1800s because of this whole plantation foolishness, right? But go back as far as you can. Do that work because I'm telling you, they're so empowered to be able to call their names. It's so empowered when you can start collecting photographs of them. Mm -hmm. And you know what's so Aww. empowering too? When you see yourself doing something and you think that you're the anomaly in your family, mm. and when you do <laughs> that family tree, you do that family work, you realize like, oh wow, great, great grandma was, you know, was a teacher too, or was, you know, was a seamstress as well, or, you know, it's so many things that you'll discover about yourself and it actually will inspire and empower your Kuji Chagulia because you get shown enough self-determined when you realize you're not alone and what you can do, you know, when you know that you're not the only one, when you know that you are not the anomaly, but that you do have ancestors who have come before you, whose blood runs through your veins, mm. who have, who have um, in, endowed you with these gifts. Endowed yeah. you with yes. these gifts. Yes. And then you're living out your purpose, you're living out their legacy, mm -hmm. and it's all in this faith and honoring who they are, who they wanted you to be, right? Which ties into who you are and who you, who you ought to be, right? It's, it's part of that legacy. Who you ought to be is part of the legacy. That's it's right. part of what they have passed down to you. So today, Coochie Jagalia is December 27th. On December 30th, which is the day we celebrate Nia, the principal Nia, meaning purpose, we are also gonna be celebrating our Nia, our Mama Nia, one of the founding members of the Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective. So that is the celebration of her life on Thursday, December 30th. On, that's three days from now. On Saturday, four days from now, on the 31st of December, we're going to be hosting our Kwanzaa Family Fest. And this is our second Kwanzaa Family Fest. Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective has been celebrating since 2010, so this is our 13th Kwanzaa celebration. But we'll have our Kwanzaa Family Fest, which is a day of fun, interactive activities. You can, we're gonna get a, you're gonna get a 90 minute workshop on how to create a family tree, which is gonna be awesome. There'll be workshops on setting goals for teens moving into transitioning into adulthood. There'll be arts and crafts. There'll be workshops on making healthy snacks for your family. There'll be African dance classes, an African drum class. There'll be, there's gonna be some poetry writing workshops as well. So it's gonna be a really exciting day. And then the day, of, then there's gonna be the opportunity just to hang out and play some old fashioned games like Double Dutch and Jacks and <laughs> things like that. So it's gonna be really fun. And then we're gonna end the day. So that's from 10 to three on Saturday the 31st. And then at three, we're gonna start with our, our Kwanzaa celebration where we're gonna be lighting the candles. And this will all take place at Bethel AME Church here in Greensboro. So if you wanna join us in practicing and living and hearing more about some of these principles or all of the principles, mm -hmm. come join us. Yes, 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 we are super excited. We know that um, a lot of you wanted to come out and celebrate with us this year. You, you know, it's been a challenging year for a lot of people, a lot of people, including the Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective. Um, as Mama Dawn stated, we, I don't want to say lost, but our dear sis Mama Nia has transitioned. And so this is our first 
Kwanzaa without her physically present. I think this year is a year for us to not only celebrate Kwanzaa, but celebrate us Ooh. getting to this point Ashe. in the year together and celebrating Ashe. each other. This is our time to really, if it's somebody you haven't seen in a while, you'll probably see them at Kwanzaa, hug them up, give them a kiss on the cheek, say Habari Ghani, you know? <laughs> you know, this is the time to show our love to one another. Yes. Yeah. So, well, thank you yeah. so much. We look forward to seeing you. Yeah. Visit us on Facebook, GSO, Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective. We are there. That's where you can find more details about any of the information. We'd love to talk to you. Inbox us on Facebook. Send us a message. Um, our phone number and all of the information is there. So and it's a public page. So even if you don't have a Facebook account, you can visit us there. Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective. Thank you so much for giving us the time and the space to talk about Kuchi Chakulia. It's a principle, again, that's near and dear to both of our hearts. And we look forward to continuing to celebrate Kwanzaa with you here at the amazing International Civil Rights Center and Museum, from our hearts and our homes to yours. Habarigani. Habarigani. <laughs> Kuji Chagulia. Kuji Chagulia. Harambe. All the words. I'm glad that you were here to hear Dr. Dawn Tafari and Tanya Poole this evening. I want you to know that those two dynamic speakers gave our audience a few assignments to take Kwanzaa into 365. But I'm gonna say to you, if you're in the Greensboro area, please look for their events and the activities that they are offering to the public. We are so thankful to have you join us this evening, and we want you to come back again tomorrow evening to hear Kia Lene Coleman speaking on the principle of Ujima.